Are your sims tired of the same old grind in life? They've seen all there is to travel, pets, and even ghouls and ghosts? Then it's time for them to move on to the next great adventure. And what you ask is that next great adventure? Why college, of course! That's right, your sims are off to school in Sims 3 University Life. Since this is an expansion, we won't be judging it by the usual areas, but instead what it adds to the game and how all the pieces come together in one total grade. So let's get studying! Much like its Sims 2 counterpart, the goal of University Life is to give your Sims a chance to boost their skills in the college environment so that they can come back with new experiences and boost their job levels and pay. While that much is the same, how they get there are through two totally different paths. None is more dramatic than just getting there. While those of us that played endless hours of Sims 2 University remember just simply sending your Sim kiddos straight off to college for their full four-year college experience, this time it's not that simple. For starters, there's the aptitude test. Yes, that's right, rather than sending your young men and women straight off to the same university of their choice, this time they have to face the wrath of the mighty llama man and his test of wits. Only the most fierce and wise may defeat this mighty mascot warrior, or those that just ignore him and take the test. Once your sim has taken this test, they will be given a score that affects the rate at which they will gain credits and the possibility of scholarships depending on your choice of major. The better the skills are, the faster your sims will reach their 48 credit requirement and graduate, so be sure to get those skills up in your area of choice as quickly as possible. Unlike its predecessor, here your young men and women won't be shipped off for the full 4 year experience, but rather 1 or 2 semesters at a time. This is where the scores really kick in as sims that score well get bonuses that can gain credit 2 or 3 times faster than those without, allowing them to graduate after 1 or 2 semesters rather than the usual 4. You can adjust this rate for any students by adjusting the amount of credits per semester between 6 and 24, giving your students an either light or heavy class schedule depending on how intense that you want the play session. Much like World Adventures, your students will be whisked off to a new zone and all they know will be left behind and unplayable until the term is over, but you won't miss it because there's so much to see and do here, starting off with where to live. Much like the previous title, you have three choices. The dorms, fraternity sorority homes, and full rental houses, each of which has their own positives and negatives depending on the way that you want your college experience to go. The dorms give you the best educational experience. Closest to the university buildings, your students have the easiest time getting back and forth between classes and university events here, as well as receiving a double bonus to all skills learned from books, studies, and activities. This is by far the easiest avenue if you are looking for the most educational path for your sims. The frat houses on the other side have a much more social bonus. Students come and go here at almost all hours as your sims and their fellow students host and join parties almost every night. If you want your young men and women to meet a lot of people and have a good time, this would be your best bet. Last up is the home rentals. By far the most private of the three, renting your own home lets your kids keep as much of a normal life during their time away from the nest as possible. Along with paying rent for this choice, your students are responsible for all the household expenses that the other two cover for free. Food and bills. Once you choose where to live, be sure to pick a bed and room quick before the best choices have been taken. Otherwise you'll be stuck with the worst room and bed and have people wandering into your room at all hours. How rude of them! Thankfully Maxis gives you a day or two to adjust to your surroundings before the term begins. And once it does, boy is there a lot to do. On top of getting to class, you have to worry about the no social groups, parties, and social networking, as if college students needed more on their plates. Let's see if we can cover it all. Probably the biggest and most interesting addition to Sims 3 is the social group system. As with real life, depending on your Sims personality traits, they will gravitate towards one of three social groups. The jocks, nerds, or rebels. Each group is defined by their activities of choice and bonus traits. Gaining influence in each of these groups can be accomplished through activities and challenges on job boards outside of the dorms and fraternity houses. Sometimes they can be influenced simply by your choice of hobby. For instance, those who spend time playing video games, using the computer and tech devices will quickly gain influence in the nerd ranks. This will give you the ability to play online against others on your console, 
an easier time getting good grades, as well as the beloved mind melt interaction, one of the most useful ways to learn traits from other sims faster. Gaining influence among the rebels nets you the ability to use the loudspeaker to rant, proclaim love for sims, and to announce protests. Further bonuses include a new skill tree in the area of street art. Your rebel sims express their individuality against the world by covering walls, ground, and even dirt with their best spray paint skills. Way to show the man! Gaining with a jock seems the most time consuming. While the others give you skills that you can work on individually, almost all jock influence is gained through social oriented interactions. This makes living in a fraternity house a must if you want to really take advantage of this group. Playing ping pong, drinking games, and school chants are the easiest way to gain influence here. And what would be the point of a social group without a place to hang out? Not much in my book. Each of the three hosts a community lot where you and your buddies can hang out and talk about the good times. The nerds meet at the local comic book shop where they can argue about heroes, video games, and play online at the Net Cafe here. Rebels can enjoy the company of their fellow nonconformists at the grotto. Here they may protest, decorate walls with street art of their choice and enjoy the latest trendy drink. And the jocks can get together for their latest party at the bowling alley. What more could they want? Of the three, I would have to say that I enjoyed the rebel group the most. Although all three do offer new interactions, an added trait slot, and career for reaching the top of the group, there just seemed like more to do with the rebels. Between covering your university with street art, ranting at people that pass you by for no apparent reason, and organizing protests, there just seemed to be so much more to do that never got old. While much of the interactions and skills from the other two groups were recycled from previous expansions. That's not to say that I didn't enjoy all three, in fact I did, but there was still far more, at least for me, to do among the rebels. While parties seem to benefit the jocks most of all, all sims will draw some benefit from socializing with others, as it is one of the best ways to gain influence in each social group. And be prepared to have a lot of them as students, regular residents, and even professors will be inviting your students to parties on an almost daily basis. Party on, dude! That's right, even with the threat of a conflict of interest, teachers will be socializing, partying, and even romancing their students all while improving grades. This gives socialites quite an advantage as they earn an easy A, getting together for a good time while the others have to work for it. That's one scandalous campus. While these parties can be a lot of fun and lead to some quite memorable situations, the whole thing can get old fast. Sometimes you'll just be coming home from one and there will be another invite waiting for you at the door. Too sick or busy to accept every party? That doesn't stop the prompts from coming, reminding even of those that you refused or ignored. And what's a college student without their phone? In this world, nothing. No longer the standard boring cell phones, these gadgets have been upgraded with the latest in smartphone technology. Each now comes equipped with texting, cameras, and social media applications. Want to send out a batch of love letters and hate mail? No problem, just pull out this little bad boy and be on your way. Keeping in touch with your friends, love interests, and enemies was never so easy. Even the Sims standing right next to you. Feel like blogging about your latest protest or romantic rendezvous? Then pull out this little gadget, make your next social media post, and watch it go viral. Here you can gain followers, ask them for donations, and even help with your studies. All while improving the brand new social media skills that assist the business major and profession. If only it worked that way in the real world. The only bad part about this is a lot of these interactions were already there before. They just put them in the palm of your sims hand so that you can do them with a simple push of a button. Some of them are a little pointless, but they do add some interesting and amusing ideas to the mix. Such as a cruel sim posting all the mean things that he did on his social blog and gaining followers for it. There are three types of classes for your sim to attend at the university. The standard class, an activity session, and lectures. Each of which is listed in the class schedule that you're supplied with under the school tab. Let's take a look at the three types. The first type is the standard university class. These work just like job rabbit holes on the regular city map. Your sim goes off and you decide between options like work hard, normal effort, socialize, and kiss up to the professor. These raise or lower your grade depending on how your student spends his or her time in the classroom. Next up we have the activity sessions. 
During these, your student goes to an assigned location and you watch as they use specific items assigned in their inventory to help skills and grades that depend on the selected major. This session is partially interactive as some sims will get bored and require you to remind them to work in class rather than play around. And lastly, we have the lectures. Much like the activities, you get to watch your sims as they head off to the student hall. Unfortunately, there is little to do here other than watching them take notes, ask questions, and sleep. Most of the time, it's not even worth watching unless you enjoy seeing sims get bored. All in all, the classes are rather upfront and there is little to do other than a few broad choices like how to spend your class time. You won't find challenges or outside activities to directly influence grades here other than studying or skill building. So don't go in hoping for something similar to home businesses or term papers like Sims 2. Once your two weeks are up, it's time to pack up and either graduate or take your credits and go home more experienced ready for the next time you come back. You'll have a day or two to get your things together, say your goodbyes, and enjoy the campus, so soak it up. After completing all the required credits, you'll be rewarded with a rabbit hole ceremony to receive your diploma before being sent on your way. The game asks you if you want to invite any family or friends to your graduation, but it's not worth it for multiple reasons. Those reasons are as follows. They don't show up, there's nothing to see, and it can bug out your game. That's right, the only thing that you get to see is your sim disappearing into a building with a timing bar and wait for them to come out and leave. But if you invited some friends and at least one of them managed to show up, chances are that your game will bug out and your sim may be stuck at college, unselectable, permanently. How's that for a send off? So many of the other expansions seemed overcomplicated in an attempt to separate themselves from their Sims 2 counterparts, but we don't see that here. Instead, what we get is a solid expansion that beckons back to the feelings that the previous university gave while introducing new features that added to the experience. Yes, the bugs in some of the new additions are a bit annoying, but it's nothing that takes too much away from the game. And if we're patient enough, we just might see Maxis actually patch the game. Either that or the community will craft a mod to fix the issues. While university life is far from perfect, I would still say that it's a good addition to the Sims 3 library. Simple, enjoyable, a mix of old and new, it was everything you want from a Sims expansion. I would even dare to say it is by far the best of the Sims 3 expansions yet. Considering all that we've discussed today, I would have to give Sims 3 University Life a well-earned B. It would be higher without the bugs. See you in college, guys. That's all for now. Peace out.